Alex Bo Rhodes is pursuing a dual degree in law and social work at Boston College. He graduated from BC High and then from Boston College with a BA in psychology. Since high school, he has worked with organizations that assist at-risk children throughout Boston, including the South Boston Boys and Girls Club and the Franciscans Children's Hospital. This summer, Alex will be working with the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office in their Child Protection Unit. Next year, he will be a social work intern with the Massachusetts Public Defender's Office in their Youth Advocacy Division. Alex looks forward to a career advocating for those who are ignored and silenced by our judicial system. Here's Alex with his talk, Unlock the Vote, Restoring Felons' Rights. Thank you, Aaron, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Great to see you tonight. In 2000, George W. Bush beat Al Gore in the presidential election after a limited recount in Florida showed him winning that state by at most 1,200 votes. In 2000 in Florida, there were over 73,000 citizens in prison on felony charges who could not vote in that election. There were other factors influencing the outcome. And even though law students aren't known for being good at math, I can tell you that their votes might have made a difference. Because of a tradition dating back to ancient Rome, citizens who are convicted of felonies or serious crimes have their voting rights altered. In most states, once you're convicted, the right is cut off immediately. You can't exercise it while you're in prison. And in a lot of states, you don't get it back right away once you're out. Kelly, would you like to hear the good news or the bad news first? The bad news. The bad news is that 48 states have some kind of felony voting restrictions in place. 34 states restrict felons from voting while they're in prison, when they're out on parole or probation. And some of those 34 go even farther than that. In Florida and Kentucky, for example, once you're convicted of a felony, you're permanently disenfranchised unless you personally petition the state to have your rights reinstated. In 14 other states, including Massachusetts, felons are restricted from voting while they're in prison. But once they get out, they can re-register in theory without any difficulty. The good news is that two states, our northern neighbors, Maine and Vermont, have no felony voting restrictions at all. Felons can vote when they're in prison just as much as they can vote when they're out. Now, restricting felons from voting is an intentional method of silencing the minority voice in the American electorate. Many states enshrine felony voting restrictions into law around the Civil War, and certain states tailored the crimes that they punish with a voting restriction to those crimes believed to be committed by black Americans. In Alabama, for example, the crime of wife beating was punished with a voting restriction. The crime of murder was not. And that's because the Alabama legislature believed that black Americans were more likely to beat their wives while whites were just as capable of committing murder. States can't be as overt in their racism anymore, so now all felonies are punished with a voting restriction. Historically, minorities, especially black Americans, have been more likely to be convicted of any crime, so they've also been more likely to lose the right to vote. Today, black Americans are four times more likely than any other member of the American electorate to lose their right to vote. And nationally, one in 13 black adults cannot vote because of these policies. You should be wanting to say to me, Alex, this is Massachusetts. We are a great liberal state. The problems of Kentucky and Alabama, we don't have those here. Well, we do. In Massachusetts, we have thousands of citizens in prison on felony charges whose voting voices are silenced. And over 50% of those citizens are black or Latino. We said that Massachusetts fits into the group of more progressive states that restricts felons from voting while they're in prison, lets them re-register when they get out. And while this might sound like decent news, Massachusetts policy has actually regressed at a time when most states have been moving towards more leniency in their felon voting policies. Massachusetts was one of the rare states that didn't enshrine felony voting restrictions into law around the Civil War, 
and our state constitution simply affirmed the general right to vote. But no prisoner had ever tried. Until 1976, when 300 prisoners at the state prison over in Concord registered to vote in that town. This didn't sit well with one of the free residents there. Like any good American, he went to court, and the case went up to the Supreme Judicial Court, our state Supreme Court. And in 1978, without changing anything, the court simply clarified that our state constitution says citizens can vote, those who are imprisoned on a felony, just as much as those who aren't. And so Massachusetts was one of the outlier states. What happened? In the late 1990s, a group of prisoners who were enjoying their right to vote began forming a political action committee or PAC. Their PAC was aimed at raising awareness about prison conditions and reforming the criminal justice system. In 1997, when they registered with the state to become an official PAC, they caught the attention of former Republican Governor Paul Cellucci, and he moved remarkably quickly to shut them down. He wrote a constitutional amendment which said, if you're in prison on a felony, you can't vote. He got two sessions of the legislature to vote to approve his amendment. And in 2000, the amendment went in front of us. And Massachusetts residents voted to approve it with 66% of the vote. Why would Governor Cellucci do this? It was likely a petty political move aimed at making Democratic state legislators look soft on crime. But it had the effect of depriving thousands of citizens of a fundamental right. And so, 17 years ago, the oldest active constitution in the world was changed to be less democratic. What can we do about it? we would have to amend the state constitution again. And that's a process that myself and five other law students began looking into this semester. And there is a long road ahead. To Governor Cellucci's credit, he did it in three years. It would likely take us at least twice that long. In Massachusetts, once you get your amendment in front of the state legislature, it has to get approved by two independent, independent sessions of the legislature, separated by an election. And then it goes in front of us, and we have to approve it. I think the hardest step in this process is getting the legislature to stick its neck out for a group of citizens with basically no political clout. But I think it's worth a shot. Now, there's still one glaring issue that we have to confront. Maybe felons shouldn't be allowed to vote. There could be a good reason for including voting restrictions as a punishment for serious crimes. Some would say that those who commit felonies are morally corrupt, and we can't let them further contaminate the system responsible for setting those morals. But this view ignores the socioeconomic realities that lead most people to crime. And don't we want those individuals with firsthand experience in what brings people to crime helping us solve those societal dilemmas? Others would say, Alex, please. We have reached a just compromise here in Massachusetts. Felons can't vote while they're in prison, they can re-register when they get out. Good enough. But we cannot compromise on justice because halfway between justice and injustice is still injustice. How many of you voted in 2016? There was a little election. <laughs> if you did and you live here, you're part of the 75% of Massachusetts residents who voted. Over 3.4 million citizens joined you in making your voice heard on election day. But 8,637 fellow citizens could not make their voices heard. And I think if even one of them wanted to and couldn't, we have a problem. Subject to some very narrow limitations for folks who have done things like commit election fraud, any adult who wants to be a part of our democratic process, anyone who wants to make their voice heard should have that opportunity because we all suffer when the electorate is not as diverse as possible. Pratt Wiley, the National Director of Voter Protection at the Democratic National Committee, told me about something that they do up in Maine, one of the states with no voting restrictions. Every year, the chief election officer there 
as part of his official capacity, not a partisan thing, takes his staff and they go to a state prison to hold a voting drive. They spend the day registering convicted felons to vote. And he says that it is one of his favorite days of the year because it affirms Maine's democratic values. Is Massachusetts a state that values denying the right to vote to a block of citizens? Or is Massachusetts a state that values bringing the vote to as many citizens as possible? It's been a privilege being here with you tonight. Thank you for your time.